Hey y'all, I'm Carolina Tony. Today our adventure begins in Charleston, South Carolina at Drayton Hall Plantation. This is a 18th century plantation and we are going to explore and see what this place has to offer. But right after this station, identification. Right after you pass through the gatehouse, there's an area to the side before you get to the plantation house. And this is an African American cemetery. And they say it is one of the oldest documented African American cemeteries still in use. By 2010, they had found at least 40 graves here and they thought perhaps much more were still here a lot of the graves are not marked but you could probably make out that they were graves because there's sunken areas all down in there i'm assuming that's probably how they found them Sadly and unfortunately, during the 18th and 19th century, enslaved people were not fortunate enough to be able to purchase elaborate headstones, as did the wealthy. A lot of times it was just a simple wooden cross or a wooden slab with something inscribed on it that would last 10 or 15 years. And this marker here is very similar to one that my great-grandfather had at his grave. He didn't have a, uh, a tombstone. All he had was a little metal plaque with his name scratched on here it. Here is the grave of Richmond H. Bowens, born September the 2nd, 1908, June the 12th, 1998. Richmond was born here on Drayton Hall's plantation in 1908. He was seventh generation of, Bo of Bowens that was brought by the Drayton family in the mid 1600s from Barbados to America. And his family stayed here on the plantation ever since. After the Civil War, when the slaves were freed, Richmond's grandfather Caesar born, he became the caretaker of the property. Richmond spent much of his youth here at Drayton Hall Plantation. And he left for Chicago after World War II. After returning to Charleston in the 1970s, Richmond became Drayton Hall's gatekeeper. For 22 years, Richmond's stories would give a lot of evidence as to things that would be uncovered by the archaeologist here at Drayton Hall Plantation, as well as some of his stories of the slaves that actually lived here. In 1783, Charles Drayton, in his early 20s, bought this home from his stepmother, Rebecca Perry Drayton. And it needed a lot of work, they say. Charles was actually born up the road near Middleton Place Plantation. And after the Revolutionary War, the house was in disrepair. But young Charles decided he would do some remodeling. There were some buildings on the property and during the American Revolution some British troops 
occupied this land and they actually used the buildings for firewood. This footprint is the foundation of what was known as a flanker building. It was constructed at the same time that the house was constructed. To this day, they're not quite sure what the flanker house was. This is the north flanker, and on that side is the south flanker. It could have been used maybe as a stable, a guest house, or just storage. There's a drawing of what the house would have looked like when the flanker houses were still here. You see they were connected by a breezeway. Not a bad house for a 23 year old, is it? Let's go inside. And these four rooms downstairs are almost identical. This is kind of different here. For some reason, that's bricked up. You can tell it's part of the original brick. And They said this house was remarkably small. <laughs> Again, a young man in his early 20s. He was filthy rich. Here was a stairwell that went upstairs as well as downstairs. There's the basement that you cannot go in. What I don't understand is why all the neat places they have blocked off. Of course, you can only go upstairs by appointment. That seems to be the norm everywhere nowadays. And another stairs downstairs. This house uses a type of architecture known as a palladium style. It was actually one of the first houses built into palladium style in North America. Okay, here is the basement and another sign. But you can get a good idea. I will tell you, there's a whole lot cooler down here than it is up top. I know there are some folks that actually believe that everyone in the 1800s and 1700s that lived in the South lived in houses like this. Uh, no, 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 no. Some actually lived in houses with dirt floors. And some of my ancestors were some of those folks. This guy was an aristocrat. But nonetheless, very, very nice. Right on the Ashley River. And I would wager to guess that during those days that the lawn was not quite so manicured as it is now. I asked if there was a family cemetery here on site and they said no, that the Draytons were not buried here. And there's also an area where some family members have been cremated. And some of those members that have been cremated more recently have been brought to this spot 
and their ashes has been scattered in the saltwater marsh there. So with high water, the tide will take their ashes out to sea. Such as Mary Jervie Drayton. She passed away in 2006. John Nelson, December 1999. Just a few of the family members. And there's a lot of space around it for more. But these are all members of the Drayton family. Dating all the way back to the 1700s. Now that was off of the tour. And I promise you, most people don't have a clue it's there. It's on the back corner of the property right on the Ashley River. And this house is probably 200 yards from the Ashley River. And of course, during those days, the Ashley River was the life of a plantation. We'd use it for transportation to ship their goods to the coast to be dispersed across the globe. This is the foundation of the garden house. They think it goes back to 1845. And the archeologists have not come to terms on the, they think the purposes could have been anywhere to serve as a greenhouse for tropical plants to a place to entertain guests on the river and catch that cool breeze. It's interesting to read and study how archeologists uncovering the remains of things. They guess at how and why and all, and sometimes they, they're way off base. Uh, can you imagine 300 years from now, someone finding the remains of a Nintendo Game Boy and kind of guessing this was a device used to defend from space invaders. Now you have heard me talk about my ancestors where I have told you they were dirt poor. And when we had to relieve ourselves, we went to the outhouse. But the super rich, they went to the privy. And there's a seven holer right behind me. Let's go take a look. Okay, so this was the privy from 1791. And it was a good 50 yards from the house. I imagine it smelled pretty bad. Of course, you know what they say about some rich people there, uh, don't stink. This was a seven holer. Here's a drawing what they think it perhaps looked like. They even had some little ones close to the ground for the little aristocrats. All right, well that is going to end our video at Drayton Hall Plantation in sunny Charleston, South Carolina. I hope you enjoyed it, at least $26 worth. If you did, go down below Give me a big old thumbs up. Be sure to tell your family and friends and share on your social media. Again, thank you for joining me. And until next time, y'all have a good day.